This sunny days, 3.05. And today's message is sponsored by Reverse. Reverse Your Thirst by my homeboy, former new two-line crew member, Fish and Grits. Reverse Your Thirst. So fresh and so clean. So I wanted today I want to talk about my first day getting out of prison after serving 22.3 years. And I remember that morning I was I was really I was I, I was anxious. I had anxiety. I didn't know with this spec, I didn't know if it was real. I didn't know if it, they was gonna let me go. I didn't know if they was gonna call me back. So I finally got dressed and walked out of the prison. And the air smelled different. It felt different. It felt like I was in a, a, a another world. And I was met with my wife, my three daughters, and my daughter Shakiva in the spirit. I was there greeted by my grandchildren and I walked out there so happy, so grateful, so thankful. And so they all hugged me, um, all of them took time, they hugged me and my wife, she waited for last, gave me my hug and my kiss. And we made it to our way uh, on our way to a suburban because I had like a, an hour to get from the prison to the halfway house. And so as soon as I got in the suburban, I say, calm down. So I'm, I'm doing my little yoga meditations and taking my, my deep breaths in and out. And so I see all of them. What appears to me, they on the phone. All they head down, they on the phone. They doing something. I don't know what they doing. All six of them in the car, they concentrating on their phone. They doing something, right? So some say, calm down. Calm down. So I just watched, you know, as the car drove off and drove out of the parking lot. And so immediately, like I caught a migraine headache because so much information was coming in my mind so fast. And I'm trying to look out the window. Uh, I'm not understanding what they're doing in the car. Everybody got their separate phones. Everybody doing their separate thing. And so we, 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 we driving down the street and I'm like, I'm like sightseeing on a sightseeing tour. So my wife looked over at me and how I was looking at everybody on the phone. So she passed me a phone. Here, this your phone. I'm like, no, no, I don't want it. I don't want it now. Hold it for me. Right? And so all of them go back to texting and they look back at me periodically and I look at them, you know, trying to keep my composure. And so we riding on the expressway. It seems like we going a hundred miles an hour. So I didn't want to let everybody know I was braced in the car. And so as we was moving, I, I seen a few people on the bus stop with phones in their hands doing the same thing. And I'm like, when I left, you know, we had burnout phones. We had the big block phones. We didn't have the cell phones that y'all got. Now, I left in 94. And so I'm like, people on the bus stop with phones? And so I'm looking at the trees and the cars and, and I'm like, I have a migraine headache. I'm trying to take in all this information, right? And so we riding and so they speeding, trying to get me to the halfway house. So I think, so we get to the, we drive up and get to the halfway house and um, my wife and them, they come in and, you know, take me to the desk and all that. And so the people tell me that I can't have a phone. So my wife and them, they left and they, they go get me something to eat. And so they showed me where I was living at. And it was in the city. 
And so it had like a, a high wall up round the, round the halfway house. And I heard some music blasting loud. And so I stood up on the rail and looked over the wall. And people had speakers outside and people was walking around and cars was passing by. And I'm like, I, I could not believe it. You know, I was, I was in shock and everything was like an awe to me, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm staying in there, I'm staying right in that little space, you know, you know, not even knowing that I had freedom to eat, to, to, to walk around and I had freedom to walk around across the street. There was a, another portion of the halfway house just across the street, but I was so happy to be out, not even knowing if I should move that much, you know, and that's how, that's how, you know, that's how messed up um, some of us is, you know, coming from being um, incarcerated for a long time. Everything is brand new to us. And so my wife and they came back with my cell phone and came back with some steamed fish and a nice meal and you know, they dropped that off to me and they stayed with me for a little while, then they left. But when they left, I took my food in my room and I went back to the rail and looked up over the wall, looking at the at the people jamming over there. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. And that that was amazing to me. I mean, things that people see every day. You know, I don't know if they take it for granted or not, but Man, it was amazing to me to see cats walking around and dogs walking around and people walking around in the community. Man, I I, I must have I must have stayed standing on that rail looking over that wall maybe for about three straight hours in amazement. And so I finally settled down in the halfway house. People in there they got they got the real cell phones, not the little flip like I got. So they got the cell phones in there and people moving around and they leaving and all that kind of stuff. So my first day, my first night, I, did, I didn't really sleep because I was just so amazed. I mean, I could walk outside anytime I want and stand on that rail and look over the wall. And man, I was, I was just so happy. And so I finally settled in, maybe about two or three o'clock in the morning, I settled in, went to sleep. So the next, uh, during that night, like I said, I seen people with um, screen cell phones. And so I told my wife, I say, I say, I say, babe, bring my phone back in the morning. I say, people got the real cell phones in here. Bring my phone back in the morning. So I, I, I you know, I finished talking to her, ate my food. It was great. It was like something that I had never experienced in my life, you know. And so I finally dozed off to sleep that night. I don't think I dreamed too much. But I woke up the next morning. Uh, my wife called me on the phone, told me she was on her way and on her way to work. She was gonna drop the cell phone off to me. So she called me when she, when she got outside. And so I was able to go outside and all of this is strange to me, right? So we are not supposed to have the screen cell phone. So when she, she pull up and she get out the car and she hug me up and she, she hand me the cell phone. And I grab it, I'm like, girl, you can't give it to me. You, you got it. And so I stuff it in my pants. I say, you can't give it to me and open it like that. They got cameras. So like, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm spooked, right? And I'm still trying to take this stuff in. So she leave. And when I go to the gate to buzz myself back in so the people can let me in, the lady tell me over the speaker, Campbell, come to the desk, come to the office now. So I'm like, oh man, I'm finna go back, I'm finna go back to the prison by the cell phone. So I know they got cameras in there, so I walked back in there in the um walking towards the office. So I seen one guy. So I, I get, I say, hold my cell phone. They calling me, right? So they called me in there. And so they told me, you've been accept, accepted at the halfway house. You could go home. And so I'm stuck. 
I said, go home? And so I called my wife. I go back outside. I called my wife back on the phone. I said, baby, they say, come get me. I could go home. She said, for real. So she turned back around. And so during that time, they put the um, the monitor on my bracelet, uh, the, the, the monitor on my ankle. So she came back. She came back and got me. So she driving me back, and I'm lost. I'm like, it's like somebody that dropped me off in the middle of L.A. or somewhere. I don't, I don't even know where I'm at. I done lost my sense of direction. I'm still looking around. Everything is new to me. It's new buildings up. The whole city look new to me. And so I didn't realize that we was at our home until she pulled up in the yard, right? And so she, she pulled up in the yard. So I walk in my door and our door. And it, it seems like, it seemed like a movie because as soon as I walked in the door, I replayed images of when the feds came and got me from my house. And then I, I realized like how grateful I was because I never thought that I would come back to my home. I never thought that I was going to be a free man. I used to dream about it, but I, I never, I never um, imagined that I would ever be free and ever come back to my house again. And so my wife brought me back. She trying to get back to work. I'm trying to get busy. It's been a long time, 22 years or so, so I'm hot, she hot, but she gotta go back to work. So we found, we, we kissed a little bit and you know, rubbed up on each other a little bit, but you know, like I said, she had to get back to work. And so she left and I watched her walking off and I'm still not believing this true. I'm not believing it. So she left and I must have paced up and down in this house, up and down, you know, trying to, you know, figure out if is it real. You know, I walk out in the yard, but then I don't know how far I could go in the yard. I don't know if I could go outside of the yard. I don't, you know, I'm just, I mean, it was just so, I mean, so surreal to me, you know. And so I, I tell I tell people, you know, it, you, you don't know that what you have is a blessing until it's taken away from you. And to, to think about that, I seen um, a guy today at my job, and I, I know, I know how people, what they partial years when they just get out of prison. I could tell. And so the two brothers they walked up early, and then as they were leaving, you know, I, I said to them, I say. How does it feel to be on this side of the gate? And both of them turned around. They, they came back to me, walked back to me. And so I was talking to them. And I know what it feels like being almost feeling like an alien in a, in a different world. You know, people are different. Um, I don't know what people, how people expect for people to be that have been locked up for a, a, a prolonged or protracted period of time. I don't know how people think that we're supposed to act, but we are different. And so I, I told, I told a guy, I was talking to both of them. I said, "Man, I said, look, I could tell that y'all just got out." I say, but I just want to say a couple of things, you know, before y'all leave and I'll see y'all when y'all come back. I say, man, look, think about what you're going to say before you say it. And think about what you're going to do 
before you do it. Because you're in a different place now. You know, you're in a you're in a you're in a so-called free world. You know, you're in a place where you will be at a restaurant and somebody will skip you in the line. You know, you will be in a, you in a place where people out out here on the street they walk up close on you and they may bump you without saying excuse me. And so I I told him I say and, and think about I say don't treat people that's on the street like you treated people in prison. People is different. You're in a different place. You're in a different environment. So take your time and be careful how you treat people out here in these streets because people look aggressive because you being in a, in a place where something that seems like a aggression is a threat. And the things that you do to people in prison is not the things that you do to people on the street. And they was listening. And they was to do it. And I could tell that they was taking it in. You know. So and I'll say for my people that, that have people because our people are still getting out of prison. Some of them still been in 25 and 30 years. You know, they still getting out. You know. And I just say, you know, thankful for, you know, my family and the people that and the people that worked on the job that I worked in that was really patient with me because I, I was different. I'm still different. And prison really, it, it, mess, it messes us up. And we try to come out and act like we all right. But if you've been in prison for a day, or or a week or a month or a year, bro. You you need counseling. I'm not to mention twenty years and twenty five years and twenty six years. So I thank all the people that that loved us, that done so much time, that was patient with us until we reacclimate back into society. You know, I remember my um my brother's wife telling me how she had to like walk in front of him in public because anybody that approached him quickly or walked up to them, you know, he took that as aggression. And he walked around with two ink pens in his pocket, but they wasn't, they wasn't ink pens to write with. And, and you would be amazed what kind of weapon an ink pen is. And a person in prison, they know how to use an ink pen. And so I'll leave that, that story for another time. But this Sunny Days, uh, this podcast was sponsored by Reverse Alkaline Water, Reverse Your Thirst, by my brother Fish and Grits. Hey man, thank you for sponsoring us, brother. Reverse your thirst.